my name is Katie or KB Does Art and uh, today I'm going to be modeling uh, and teaching you guys how to 3D model a uh, Pokeball. So uh, this is a reference that I found um, that I wanted to try out. Should be a pretty quick and easy tutorial. Um, kind of wanted to introduce a couple uh, awesome features in Maya that utilize um, kind of like circularizing uh, rectangular meshes and uh, stuff like that. So in Maya, first thing I want you to do is go ahead and just grab a sphere. And then I think it's got enough divisions. I've got it at 20. I think that should make it smooth enough. Yeah, let's let's leave it as 20. So you can just keep your uh, the default uh, subdivisions as 20 for both of those. And then it looks like on our reference, it basically splits it um, almost halfway and kind of extrudes some faces. So I think first what I want to do is find where this circular uh, mesh would be. So if we are right here, if we go into face mode, you can take these faces. Yeah, that looks good. And I think actually I might, let's take all of these guys. So you have like a square of four by four. And then I want you guys to go to edit mesh, circularize. Now, it's probably going to end up looking a little bit weird at first. Uh, so what I would do is bring down the radial offset. You want to hold control while you do that. So you'll get something looking like that. And let's see. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good size. And then... We're just going to go ahead and change the twist because the twist is the next thing. All right, that looks pretty good. You can also grab your multi-cut tool by holding a uh, shift and right click and you can add a multi-cut on uh, just like either side if you think you need it. All right, and then really what we would do next is let's click space and go into front view. And then click Q, you're just going to be in face mode and you're going to select, uh, let's see, let's select probably these top guys and then hold shift and select these bottom guys. And then you can hold tab and deselect those guys that are part of the circle. And then all you want to do is do control E and up the thickness. Doesn't need to be a ton. Probably just like 0.5 or 0 0.05, 0 0.07, somewhere around then. Okay, perfect. And then let's take these faces right here. Um, I'm just holding tab and selecting all of them. You're going to want to extrude and offset them in. Probably about there. And then let's extrude again. And this time you're going to up the thickness. Probably about the same as the outside. And then click extrude one more time. Offset that part in. And then extrude it one more time and up the thickness. Actually, I think I want to make that smaller in the middle. So let's take these faces and click R and scale them down. Then select all these faces, control E to offset, and then you can go ahead and extrude them more. Extrude it one more time and then up the thickness which I did about 0 0.05 each of those times. All right, if you click three, you can kind of see how it's like smoothing out. Uh, you don't need to smooth it out if you don't want to, uh, like if you want to leave it kind of geometric looking. Uh, something I do want to fix is I'm noticing we're getting this like 
little curve kind of in this part right here. Uh, so I just want to take this vertice and this vertice. I'm just going to push them out like just a tad to try and kind of like smooth that out a bit. I'm going to take these guys and kind of push them in. Actually, maybe bring them out. All right, the next step is I'm going to be beveling some edges. So go ahead and click one to be in this mode again. Go into edge mode and just hold shift and start double clicking uh, the edges to select all of these edges where 90 degree changes happen. All right, that looks all good. We can do the same here. If you accidentally click one, just hold control and double click again. All right, looks like I got them all. Don't forget to click this outer ring as well. All right, that looks good. And then go ahead and do control B to bevel it. And you can give it two segments. Uh, you can click three and see like where you would need to give it two segments if you even need to. Uh, I think two looks pretty good. Only thing we're missing is these edges. So I would grab those four and bevel those and give it two segments as well. That way the corners kind of round out. All right, but that is about it. Uh, you can also take, I'm noticing that like it's a little tall, so we can shorten it a little bit if you don't, um, if you think it got a little like non-circular. But I think that is about it for this tutorial. So if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to let me know, or if I miss something, um, the last thing that we can do, if you want to, would just be to select uh, all the faces and give them just like a base texture. Uh, so I would probably select these four and then do shift greater than to grow your selection up like that. Uh, all the way until you hit that bottom ring. So probably one more. Oh, actually we can leave that one black. So these guys would be white, so you can assign a new material, AI standard surface, uh, you could just leave it as white. And then all of these guys on the bottom would be white as well. So you can kind of like attempt to best select those. And then you can hold tab and just drag. When they turn green, that means you're deselecting uh, the uh, faces. You could also hold control and like click one and double click the next to deselect like a ring of them. The same thing happens when you do uh, hold shift and double click the next. I don't know why these guys did not select. All right, the rest look good. Uh, this is the same color, so you can just go to existing and then grab that uh, standard uh, AI standard surface material. For these guys, I would probably just click one and then click the next like that. Uh, just so you're like selecting a whole ring of them. That makes it a little bit easier. And then I would just go through, hold control, click one, and double click the next to deselect the whole ring. Oh, okay. For these guys, just hold tab and deselect in the middle. All right, that looks good. These guys are black, so you can assign new material and make them black and then for these top ones let's hold tab select these and then do shift grow to select the rings 
the grow is uh, the greater than symbol on your keyboard. It's the one where the period is. All right, let's see if that got all of them. Oh, one more. There we go. All right, and then these guys are red. So I sign one more new material, do AI standard surface, and then uh, you could find a red that fits the color you're going for. Probably like around there. All right, I usually go ahead and add a plane to my scene, drag it on down. I assign the checker material to it, which you can find by clicking this little checker, and then it's listed under the given materials. All right, that's looking good. And then you can click Arnold Render to go ahead and see how it is turning out. Uh, oh, I forgot. Go to Arnold and grab a Sky Dome, and then you can see how it's turning out. You can also select the object and do Edit, Delete All by Type History to uh, just easily delete everything. You can up your metalness on the object if you want it to be more reflective. Uh, or you can up the roughness on it, depending on just uh, just kind of what you want it to look like. You can also, I usually advise you guys to rename your textures so that they're easy to find. There we go. I'm going to up the weight on all of them just so they're a bit brighter. But yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. So um if you guys have any questions feel free to let me know i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, if you guys have any other suggestions of tutorials i should do um, i know this one is pretty easy and fun uh, but it does introduce the circularizing function so i hope that was intriguing and fun to you uh, as well but yeah i'll see you guys in the next tutorial bye guys